Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to another episode of this cowrie build. This guitar, 42,000 years old is the is the wood at least, uh, carbon dated to within plus or minus 800 years. And uh, of course, I'm building a guitar out of it because, well, that's what the wood wanted. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Anyway, in this episode, I've got the neck. We have now got the truss rod access. I need to drill the tuner holes, but before I even get to that, I want to cut the fret slots by hand. I'm not going to be using a, a, a saw or a crosscut saw or a table saw slit or anything like that. Uh, I haven't cut them by hand on the channel for a while, so here we go. I need to mark out and uh, sort out the inlays, which are going to be made out of um, UK bog oak. This is Swamp Cowrie from New Zealand. And uh, I thought, hey, we've got something similar uh, in the UK, and that's Bog Oaks. So uh, on with the build. Oh, yes, check out CrimsonGuitars.com and Dorset Guitar Museum and Great Guitar Giveaway and all of those fun things if you haven't yet, because I'd appreciate it. Uh, I was worried about strength, which is why we've got these multi, 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 multi laminates in here. And uh, it has, over the last couple of weeks since the fretboard's been glued on, actually uh, held very, very stable. Uh, the dual action truss rod isn't needed much. So I'm just finessing the shape, 12 inch radius, getting that sorted, and uh, then we can crack on with the frets. So this is a very, very cool tool that just makes life easier for you. There's a locating pin in there, move it along, and it, the ruler sits in at the thing, and your saw sits and uh, cuts exactly where it's supposed to be. It's all um, perpendicular and perfect and just spot on and easy. Of course, I'm doing it by hand because uh, this tool isn't designed to work with something with a headstock. Generally, you'd cut the fret slots uh, before you glue them down. Best practice? Ha! I laugh in the face of your best practice. I'm not actually sure why I made the decision this time not to do it that way. Doesn't matter though. On we cut. Okay, to start out with, I need to find a center line. And the Crimson Protractor's got a zero in the center, so it makes that easy. And then just double check it, make absolutely sure. And I am actually slightly off on that. Thick pencil, I should have gone for a thinner pencil. <laughs> How embarrassing. And by slightly, I'm saying a uh, half a millimeter. Back to my zero. 21 and a fraction, yeah, that is absolutely right. That's better. Nice. Okay, with an actual center line, it's actually centered and a line, uh, we can move forward. At this point, my overhead camera has given up the ghost for some reason, so uh, yeah, bye bye overhead camera. I could use a normal standard ruler, and you've seen me do this in other builds uh, across the thousand odd videos I've made on YouTube up to date. Uh, it requires concentration and thought, and uh, is not ideal. We've got a crimson ruler here that's already pre-marked out for uh, four common scale lengths, and uh, with that carefully taped down so it doesn't move, well, it's easy. Okay, double check. <laughs> I mean, it's a 25 and a half inch scale. I know it's a 25 and a half inch scale. It's fine. 
Uh, I'm working from the inside of the two nut lines. Again, that's fine. I know exactly where that is. And I basically want to tape the rule exactly where it needs to be. That'll do nicely. This also gives us uh, positioning for the dot inlays centered on the middle of the fret, which uh, is useful. Useful indeed. Unless you make a mistake and cut a slot there, in which case, mm, not ideal. And then you treble check things. Once you get to it, actually, this is a fairly, or this can be a fairly rapid job. If you have the right tools, of course. Once you're done, double check, use the rulers, uh, use your eyes. You will see if they are not perpendicular to each other. Parallel to each other, damn it! <laughs> okay. One day, one day I'll get there. I've got a proper mental block on that one. But uh, it's all looking fine to me. I am going to uh, double check and then it is on to cutting by hand with a uh, crimson fret slotting saw and uh, I'm actually going to use the uh, the death stop this time which isn't something that I normally bother with let's see how it goes so there we go now it's important to say most of these fret slots I want to cut bang down the center because uh, hey, the intonation point is going to be at the center of the frets. The nut, the nut is a different story. I want the nut line to be coming off the edge. So actually, when I'm cutting this nut slot here, I want the saw curve to be in there. Look at that, I managed to draw a line and hold a camera at the same point. And on the same thing, it's on the inside of there. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind. The, the width of the blade is, yeah, it's tiny, but uh, it is enough to, uh, it's enough to kink out your intonation just a little bit. Now, uh, how, <laughs> it's so distracting listening to zombie while <laughs> trying to talk to you guys. I said, it's Crimson 10, use it. Um, they're cool, I love them. Uh, the song, song started while I was talking and it was just, yeah. We're cool, we're cool. So yeah, you want to kink your saw blade off just uh, a little bit uh, to one side of the line. In abstract it sounds impossible, but uh, actually make a few cuts and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This is not difficult, although it does need to be relatively precise. Yeah. All right. So this is the controls, there you go. So I've got uh, all the cameras, all the stuff, and then now to remove all of the guesswork uh, and worry and fear. If this is the first time you've done this, 
use a scalpel blade. In fact, well, I still use a scalpel blade. I'm sure the lines are all in the right place and all of that. I'm gonna go back with my protractor and score down the center of each of these lines on the fret slots and slightly off center for the nuts. But um, yeah, I'm gonna make score that line a couple of times and my saw is gonna to wanna to follow that line uh, rather than gonna to wanna to go off piste, which is not what you want with frets. Okay, I need to find my nut material before I do the other one. So put the uh, put the scalpel in the center. Hold on, put the scalpel on the line, but not in the center. So you can line up the center line of the uh, protractor. And you're sorted. And I'm cutting next to this line. Now the beautiful thing is, if you're cutting on a radius, it's really easy. You're only cutting a small section of the material. If you're cutting right through a flat piece of wood um, with a saw like this where the teeth are not curved, um, it becomes hard work and you run the risk of actually messing up at that point. <laughs> So my depth stop is working. It's actually set quite shallow at this point, but uh, yeah, there you go. So onwards, here's my cut. I can feel it following the, uh, following the line created by the scalper blade. <laughs> gently does it and I'm following the radius the whole time. What this means is that uh, uh, I don't have a, a large empty cavity in the center underneath the fret uh, introducing uh, potential inconsistencies in the neck and uh, yeah weak points. We don't want weak points. On to, on to the inlays. I want to uh, use a center point and just uh, and just mark them out so that I don't lose those positions and uh, then we can move forward. So these are in the same place as on the uh, fender. I've double checked uh, the neck for straightness and radius and all of that good stuff. So uh, yeah, let's make some inlays. All right, so on to, uh, on to Harvey, who is gonna take a chunk of bog oak and uh, make us some custom inlays, including a logo. So yeah, why not? Five four nine. That will do nicely, and uh, and here's the uh, here's the logo. I'm going to inlay that by hand.
just for fun. All right, so I've got a fantastic quality six millimeter Famag center point drill bit here. It is, it is the uh, dog's danglies of drill bits. And uh, very slowly and carefully, using my center point, drill in. Now, how deep are these? I suppose I could go a little bit deeper. There is no replacing a proper sharp good quality drill bit. It's absolutely essential. Even if you only get the two or three sizes that are most important. It's at this stage that I really feel like the guitar is coming to life. And uh, yeah, it's cool. So, um, well, I'm not going to use super glue. I would normally use super glue in this. Uh, tight bond, uh, alkaline, etc. all of this stuff will dry at current temperatures in my workshop in about half an hour or so. And uh, I'm worried about the super glue wicking through the grain of the wood and coming up in random places. And I don't want to seal it with shellac. I don't want to be bothered with that. So just normal wood glue, drop it in there, hammer the inlay in, and we're done. Until the next one of a myriad tasks. I love my life. Still got some masking tape on it. And here we are. So uh, the glue has uh, has done its thing. It's dried. It's cured. It's all sorted. This gorgeous little delicate piece of bog oak which I'm hoping I don't break something like that maybe maybe in line with one of the uh, with one of the veneer lines that could work quite cool but anyway for now ta-da You can uh, either start with a with a chisel or a file or a leveling beam uh, or even a small plane, but I think a nice sharp little chisel uh, paring it down in this case is the right tool. Now this bog oak actually feels a little bit plasticky. That's so weird. Because essentially with the chisel I can pair on the wood without actually touching it. Whereas with the uh, uh, the rasps and files and sandpapers etc. I am going to be affecting the uh, the wood underneath. And we'll have to sand the whole thing down again. Okay, somewhat foolishly I left the glue on here without uh, wiping it away and as it's fully cured now 
you do run the risk of it um, tearing out as you cut it away. So just be very, very careful. Take small amounts. It's always better to think ahead and solve the problems before they actually happen. But in a pinch, oftentimes, a good sharp blade helps solve many problems. That sounded vaguely uh, serial killery. I apologize. So now I've got a little bit of, uh, of sanding to do. That's what she's going to look like. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> At this point, I'm not going to uh, carry on any further. Life is in the way. In the next episode, I am going to inlay the logo. Let me know if you think that I should put it uh, on one of the lines so it sort of uh, looks like the line turns into the logo because I think that's quite a cool idea uh, or in between the two lines also would you like to see me uh, do that inlay entirely by hand with no power tools or using a, uh, a multi-tool uh, let me know in the comments below and I will uh, I will listen to the masses uh, next episode two I'm going to genuinely I am unsure what I want to do on this fretboard. It takes a little bit longer, but yeah, fine. Okay, we're going to use some shellac on the fretboard. We're going to use some shellac. We're going to then uh, use some guitar finishing oil over a couple of days, build up a really, really epic oil finish, but sealed with shellac, which is also going to harden this carry fretboard uh, even more than it already has, having been gone through the cactus juice, etc. And uh, then I'm going to install some frets. That's next week. For this week, have a good one. I'll see you soon. Go make some sawdust. Goodbye. Click like, subscribe. Go and buy some tickets to, buy some, some, to win some guitars and support a burgeoning guitar museum while you're about it. But uh, most importantly, yeah, go make some sawdust. Goodbye.